Right now at five, your first look at five Genesee County teenagers charged with murder in that deadly rock throwing incident along I-75 and they will be staying in jail. But we begin local four news at five with breaking news. A water emergency tonight in Oakland County. 12 communities are under a boil water advisory and some even having to go without any running water at all. And it could be days before it's fixed. Thanks for being with us. A mess tonight for nearly 400,000 people living in Oakland County as they've been told the water isn't safe to drink. And included in that 50,000 customers who don't have running water at all, look at the map that we've got here showing all 12 communities that are under this advisory, not only today and tonight, but over the next few days. And here is the reason for it. This is video from Sky 4 over 14 mile in Drake in West Bloomfield. You can see a big hole just full of water there where a 48 inch water main broke last night. We've got this covered from multiple angles tonight. Consumer investigator Hank Winchester is helping you with the hunt for bottled water. Paula Tutman spent the day with folks uh, making do as they're able to try to use the water in their homes. But let's start with Jamie Edmonds. She's at the site of that break. Jamie. Yes, I'm going to get out of the way right away because that is where all the action is. The scene has just grown all day long as we have been here as crews try desperately to fix this problem for the more than 250,000 people affected. You know, the main break of this magnitude impacting so many customers is really unprecedented. It started at 545 on Monday, a water main break at 14 mile between Drake and Farmington Road, a leak that grew quickly. Neighbors on Verona Street shared this video with us of water rushing down their street Monday evening. According to the Great Lakes Water Authority, they first noticed a drop in pressure. We were not expecting a water main break in this area. Uh, this particular pipe was installed in 1970. Uh, it's been about the mid-service life of this particular pipe. Uh, so it was not something that we expected. Once the problem was identified, crews isolated it and turned off the valves. This morning, the company ordered a new 48 inch transmission line from Illinois. Once the pipe arrives tomorrow, they can begin to repair the broken line. In the meantime, they are trying to reroute water to make sure most of the nearly 260,000 residents affected can at least get water to come out of their faucets but they say that doesn't mean the water is safe. The boil water advisory, until we officially say it is lifted, it will be in effect uh, until we can um, properly test. Tell me when to go, I can't hear. All right, back here live on 14 Mile, the work being done behind me here, they're trying to restore pressure, but the important thing is even if you have water, you still have to boil it. Why the delay? Because even when the pipe gets here, it's 48 hours to test the pressure and the quality. Now let's go to Paula Tutman with the people dealing with this in their own homes. Hi, Jamie. I know the folks where you are are hard at work, but take a look at these volunteers as well. They are trying to make sure that people in Novi at least have drinking water. And I say people because people come first in this scenario and they're having a tough time of it. For Patty, who lives in a subdivision north of I-96, she has no running water, which means no showers, no brushing teeth, no flushing toilets, no fun. That's it. She just happened to be in Ann Arbor today, realizing that water in her own neighborhood might be hard to get, so she stocked up. I thought since I was in Ann Arbor that it was probably safer to get it there. Boy, did she stock up. She said she knew that they'd have to boil water last night. Had she known this morning that she would be out of water, she might have planned differently. No, she would have planned differently. It's really unfortunate that we didn't get notice that it was going to be turned off completely. That would have helped. So we could have filled our bathtubs. And I encourage anyone in all the other cities that still has water that you have to boil it, but fill your bathtubs. Fill your sinks, fill anything you can fill. In the meantime, she's doing everything she can to break the running water habit. It's, I put tape over the, the like my refrigerator um, where I get water usually. And on the, on actually on the, the sink, on everything, every faucet, so I don't accidentally drink out of there. Okay. Concerned that it's gonna last for several days based on what I've heard. I'm getting the alerts from Novi and it sounds like it might be 
at least four or five days. So we also posed a question, of, if you remember at four o'clock today, what about pets? I got an immediate email from Dr. Christy Yee, a veterinary in Rochester, and I also double checked with Blue Pearl, and they're my veterinarian experts. And they say, if humans can't drink the water, pets and fish can't consume the water either. And so you have to boil water if you have water for your pets and your fish, or you have to give them bottled water. I do need to say here in Novi, they are dealing with people only. I just talked to the emergency manager. He said he goofed. He didn't think about the pets. He's going to work on that, but right now they're rationing water. You can see they've got a long line. They're asking people only to get water for the humans in their family. They've got to figure out pets later, guys. Back yeah. to you. Yeah, all right, Paula. Now, the lack of clean water has people packing the stores, uh, buying up whatever bottles or cases of clean water they can find. We're also learning new information about the plans being put in place at larger retailers, such as Meyer, Costco, and Kroger, to get more water onto local store shelves. Let's check in with consumer investigator Hank Winchester. He's live at Costco in Bloomfield Township, where business there has been brisk, Hank. Yeah, absolutely, Kimberly. I mean, this store is always busy, but right now really busy and most people in the search for water. Take a look over my shoulder too. You see that they have just put out uh, porta potties here on the east side of the building. Those are for employees because this is one of the areas where the water is simply not flowing. Uh, we do have new information though from Meyer, Kroger and Costco about when you could expect to see water in your community. Signs like this one popping up all over Metro Detroit. Bottled water flying off the store shelves, long lines and carts full at the Sam's Club in Farmington Hills. So it's been a difficult task, but we'll make it through somehow. Maxine Clark bought as much water as she could before this store ran out. As we drove up, we saw that everybody was coming out with Buku water, and so it's like well, we need to get some water, but we didn't get nearly as much as the other people. In Novi, a water distribution center set up the focus here, making sure the elderly and those in need get the water that they need. Very frustrating, but what can you do? You know, it's nice that the city giving us water, you know, but now we got to worry about the flushing of the toilet. What we know is both Meyer and Kroger are bringing in new shipments of water to stores in affected areas. Supplies may be low at some stores today, but store shelves could get restocked overnight. Costco's out of water, Commerce, Lowe's is out, Home Depot is out, and Myers is out. Mahar Bacall from Commerce Township has been all over, but he finally found the water he needed, grabbing the last few cases available. Hopefully we'll, uh, we'll get the water back up, and I have faith in Oakland County Water um, that they'll get everything back and going, so everybody will be able to take a shower and brush their teeth and do whatever they need to do. They expect more water to arrive here at the Costco store in uh, West Bloomfield Township later this evening. I also have uh, new information we just received from Walmart Corporate. I want to share that with you. Uh, corporate saying tonight, we are aware of the boil water advisory and are working with our operations team to move additional bottled water to the impacted region as quickly and safely, safely as possible. We're live here tonight in West Bloomfield Township. Hank Winchester, back to you. Hank, I was looking at our Facebook page a little earlier and saw a few comments on there about, about price gouging in terms of the water. Have you heard any of that at uh, any stores in the area? You know, I've been receiving a few messages about that myself, Kimberly. Mainly, we've been hearing about that at locally owned stores or gas stations. Mm -hmm. uh, police investigations not underway that we're aware of right now. This is not taking place at these big box stores like Costco. But if you see something and it doesn't seem right, notify police or let us know. We want to investigate yeah. price gouging, too, if it is, in fact, a problem. Right, indeed. Okay, Hank, we appreciate it. We've got all the angles of this water emergency covered on air and online at clickondetroit.com. And there you can find a comprehensive what you need to know right up with everything folks in the affected areas need to do until, of course, we get the all clear from the water authority. And ahead at 530, our own ER doctor, Dr. Frank McGeorge, is live from Providence Park Hospital in Novi. He'll show us what they're doing right now to make sure their patients are well cared for even without water. All right, now to a local four update under that deadly rock throwing incident along I-75. Today, all five teens were arraigned on charges of second degree murder in a Genesee County courtroom. Rod Maloney is following this story for us tonight. Rod, uh, we reported yesterday they're all being charged as adults, right? 
that's right, Kimberly. As young as they might look, indeed, they are being charged as adults. They face 10 charges, and they're being held in jail tonight without bond. 17-year-old Kyle Anger here in the orange jumpsuit. Police believe threw the deadly six-pound rock last Wednesday night that killed 32-year-old Kenneth White. The other four young men in order here are 16-year-old McCaden Payne, 15-year-old Alexander Miller, 15-year-old Trevor Gray, and 16-year-old Mark Sikelski. Their tearful family sat in the courtroom in sadness and disbelief. Their sons are facing the possibility of life in prison. The young men from Clio are charged with second degree murder, conspiracy to commit murder, malicious destruction of property and other misdemeanor destruction of property charges. They all pled not guilty. They allegedly filled a pickup truck bed with rocks and a car tire, then drove to several overpasses over I-75, depositing the tire and at least 20 rocks, one as large as 20 pounds onto the roadway. At least four vehicles were damaged before the deadly toss where Kenneth White, the father of a young son, was struck in the chest and face while riding in the passenger seat of a pickup truck on the way home from work and died of blunt force trauma. White's fiance was devastated. For some senseless act for it to be just a rock, just to take him so soon. And while emergency crews worked on white, police say the young men drove off and had dinner at a McDonald's. Took away a child's father <laughs> and the love of my life. Well, next stop for these five young men is going to be a probable cause hearing in November, and then usually about a week or two later, they have the preliminary exam. That's where we're likely to get more information about this very sad case. Reporting live, Rod Maloney, Local 4. It is that. All right, Rod, we're just getting started here on a very busy Tuesday. And we've got much more ahead in our next hour, including Kid Rock clearing the air on whether he's running for Senate. And with their backs against the wall, Flint's city council makes a decision on the city's water source. But the decision isn't making a lot of people happy. Hi, Ben. Hey, Kim, our west zone getting wet right now is the water starting to push in from West Michigan, and the temperatures will be a big concern once we get past tonight. More on that ahead. A gunshot broken into in Roseville. It is so heavily fortified that the robber had to go through the roof. What did they take and what did they leave behind? Tonight, new at six. You may remember the story of this mother sent to jail for five days for not vaccinating her son after a judge says she signed a consent form. Now that mother is speaking for the first time since she's gotten out of jail and her story is different. Also persuading the president, major automakers, suppliers and auto dealers joining forces will have a look at the policy that they're working to keep in place at six. Now, next here at five, check out this brand new video just into the newsroom from Roseville Police. Shows a man breaking into a gun shop overnight and walking out with all the guns that he could get his hands on. Uh, this happened at Peter's Gun Shop and Range on Gratiot near 12 Mile in Roseville. And now police are there hoping somebody knows who that guy is. And as Nick Monticelli reports, he worked really hard just to get into the store by cutting open the roof. When you take a look at the front of Peter's gun shop here in Roseville off of grass, you understand why this burglar went through the roof. There's no way you're going to get in through the front of the store because of all of this steel. He got in there, took the guns, got back out. But as the police chief is about to tell you, we've got some pretty good evidence. Roseville investigators spent hours this morning trying to figure out exactly what was taken from Peter's gun shop in Roseville and also what evidence was left behind. The best evidence, though, is this. Security cameras caught the man after he broke into the store around 6.30 this morning. The store and gun range is on Gratiot near 12 Mile. The front is heavily guarded, so this man went through the roof. I hacked a hole through the roof of Peter's gun shop to gain access to the inside of the store. Uh, once inside the store, he stole a variety of uh, weapons, pretty much anything that he was able to get his hands on. Inventory was checked to see exactly how many guns were stolen, which is one of the Roseville Police Chief's biggest concerns. Obviously, we don't want to see these uh, fall in the wrong hands, which I'm sure they will, because I'm, he's not going to be selling these things any type, any form or fashion of legally. So, yeah, we it, it does uh, put it up on the radar of what why did they need these guns. This is not the first time the gun shop has been targeted. In December of 2016, two teens tried breaking in by pulling the front door apart. Their truck got stuck in the snow and they were caught the same day. And this time around, what should help catch this man besides the security footage? 
his own DNA. It also appears that he cut, uh, cut himself somewhere, so we also have DNA evidence. I know this goes without saying, but I do want to reiterate, if you recognize that man, the detectives at Roseville PD would love to hear from you. Please give them a call, or you can call Crime Stoppers. That number is 1-800-SPEAK-UP. In Roseville, Nick Monticelli, Local 4. All right, Nick. Well, if you're like me, you really felt like fall came in today. Yeah. I Just mean, today. The leaves fall and everything. It's yeah. like, okay, it's here. This is it. It's a personal <laughs> affront to you, right? If that's how it felt. Just yes. Smacked you in the I face. took it very personal. Uh, but you think fall is here now. Uh, wait yeah. till you see the rest of this forecast because it does get a little bit more seasonable, I guess is a <laughs> mild way of putting it. Uh, but four live radars got rain out there. It is all liquid. At least we can say that, even though it's definitely feeling on the colder side of things. Uh, you can see some of this wet weather uh, starting to get a little bit more intense out here in the western parts of Washtenaw County, out towards uh, Chelsea, Dexter, uh, also around Freedom Township. You're getting some of the uh, more moderate rain just starting to move in right now. Genesee County and up to Lapeer County got plenty of it as well as this entire push of moisture starts making its way towards us. There's a boundary out there, kind of a, a semi cold front, if you will, that's going to be uh, moving in as we head through the rest of the afternoon and evening hours. Temperatures right now are at 50 degrees and these are coming off of our highs. We're already starting to see these numbers fall as those uh, appeared in the early part of the afternoon. Now, at least we're not dealing with this up in the north in the UP. Uh, that little blue bullseye near Marquette, that's three to six inches of snow they're expecting, uh, possibly uh, by 7 a.m. on Wednesday. So it does look like things are starting to turn uh, here in the mitten. 50 is where we're at right now. We do have that south-southwest wind at 23, but the gusts have been up near 50 or 40 miles an hour at times this afternoon and evening. They'll subside somewhat tonight, but it is still going to be breezy going into tomorrow. And as far as the cool air goes, yes, we're going to have to contend with that, especially tomorrow. Highs on Friday not making it out of the 40s in most spots. We'll look at that in your four zone in a minute. But Wednesday night, we're going to be dipping down below freezing in some spots. So there's a possibility that we could see some areas of frost, but it looks like right now that the winds are going to stay just brisk enough to keep that from forming. A little bit of some mild air comes in here as we get into Thursday and Friday, but that real reinforcing shot of cold air that Devin will be saying some choice words about that's coming in as we get in towards the weekend. 43 tonight as those uh, showers start to become a little bit more widespread the later we get tonight and your high temperatures tomorrow in your four zone forecast. This is as good as it gets. We'll barely touch 50 degrees here in the city, but look at how many areas are going to be just in the 40s for highs tomorrow. Most of the south zone, say for Monroe and Carlton out in the west zone. Everybody's in the 40s tomorrow. Upper 40s. There's our max and once you get north of M59, it's anywhere between the mid and upper 40s. Take your pick and maybe 50 degrees out there in St. Clair. Otherwise, we will see temperatures return to the 60s briefly. We're talking for maybe an hour or two on Friday. Then we get cold again as we head towards the weekend. 50s for highs and a good string of 30s as we get into next week. So we'll pay very close attention to Thursday morning uh, when <laughs> some of those areas could be below freezing. <laughs> That's going to get our attention. Quick. Yeah. yeah. All right, well, it's a heartbreaking lesson this mother was forced to learn. New at five, how she's using her son's death to help teach others about addiction. But first, a devastating crash overnight. What caused a truck to crash head on into a semi? That's next. The local for there was a deadly car crash this morning on Grand River and Warwick on Detroit's west side. It happened around 2 a.m. when a red pickup truck going northwest on Grand River went over the middle yellow lines and ran head on into an 18 wheeler, which was stopped at the light in the southbound lanes. The driver of the 18 wheeler was uninjured. However, the driver of the red pickup truck was pronounced dead on the scene by paramedics. City Council in Flint has made a decision for their source of water. After requesting more time to comply with a federal judge's order, they have selected the Great Lakes Water Authority. The council has approved a two-year contract with that source that has been serving Flint since the lead disaster was declared in 2015. Though a deal was made, the state wants Flint to approve a 30-year deal, and Mayor Karen Weaver is prepared to sign the master agreement. The final lab results for the measles case in Livingston County have come back and come back negative. The October 13th announcement of measles came from initial lab results from both the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services and a commercial lab testing positive. But a third more specific lab test was conducted at the CDC in Atlanta and resulted in a negative measles diagnosis. The exposure risk in Livingston, Oakland and Washtenaw counties has officially been eliminated. 
at 5.30. Lack of drinkable water affects medical facilities the most. I'm Dr. Frank McGeorge. Coming up, how the two largest hospitals affected have handled the crisis. An extraordinary day today in Washington as two Republican senators issue withering critiques of their own president. A mother is pleading for answers in her son's murder. If people don't hear about this, they think it's solved. And it's not. We'll tell you more about the case coming up. On the next it's been six long years. Two local families desperate for answers tonight as the person who killed their loved ones is still running free. On October 24th, 2011, the bodies of Anthony Velez and Rosemary Chise were found in a field off of I-94 in Detroit. Now on the six year anniversary of this tragedy, the mother of one of the victims spoke in hopes of drumming up new clues in this case of any kind. Our Coco McAvoy spoke with her today. Anthony Velez and Rosemary Chez were found murdered in this area near I-94 on Detroit's east side six years ago to the day. And Anthony's mother is still hoping for answers. Six years. It's a long time. It's difficult for Lisa Puma to talk about October 24th of 2011 or even utter the names of her son and his girlfriend. Tony and Rosie. Velez had been selling projection TVs on Craigslist back in 2011. He was contacted for a sale, but it was a setup, and Velez and Chez were beaten, robbed, and shot during the drop off. They're not living their lives anymore. <laughs> the three people that did this, you're allowing them to walk the streets. It gets more difficult for Puma with each passing year. A hole that's never going to go away. Puma is frustrated with the investigation. How come certain ones get, they get solved? And here you got this one's got answers that you're not doing anything with. She knows there are people out there who know what happened to Velez and Chez that day. It's time, it's time for you to get it off of your mind. Your conscience. So Velez and Chez can finally have justice. We need Tony and Rosie to know that they were finally taken care of. Out here live now, it's just a heartbreaking case. And of course, there is a reward for information. It's $7,500. That's a cash reward. And if there's information given by midnight tonight, information that leads to an arrest, $1,000 is added to that reward. Back to you. Well, I know the mom mentioned that there are answers in this case. Did she elaborate on what she meant by that, Coco? Yes, she says over the years people have reached out to her with information and she says she's pretty positive that she knows who's responsible for this crime. She says she's reached out to police with that information as well. So what her message really is, is she wants witnesses to come forward. The people who have spoken to her over the years, she wants those people to call Crime Stoppers to know that they're anonymous and can really, really help the families in this case. So, so after this long, all right, Coco. Now, to new information on the water main break in Oakland County. It was a 48-inch main break located in West Bloomfield. Great Lakes Water Authority says new pipes are on the way, but for now, 51,000 people are without water. Nearly 400,000 are impacted by the boil water advisory. The advisory is expected to be lifted by the end of the day on Friday. And local hospitals in the area of the water main break are stuck. They've got to cope without water, too. Very uh, a lot of things that they have to handle. Dr. McGeorge is live at Providence Park Hospital in Novi right now. And Doc, obviously they're prepared for things like this, but this is a huge undertaking. Yeah. Oh, no doubt about it. But you know, Karen, hospitals play an important role during a community emergency like this, and they are up to the challenge. Here at Providence Park in Novi, the response was swift and definitive, aimed at keeping patients safe. At about nine o'clock last night, by the city that there was a water main break that we were affected by and that we would be on a boil water alert. We have our emergency preparedness group and we pulled that group together. For Providence Hospital COO Margaret Klobukar, it's been a long day. Hospitals across the affected area reacted similarly, providing for the immediate need. That means we have a supply of bottled water and gallon jugs of water 
that we are able to put into operation so that we can continue to take care of patients um, very safely. Large hospitals like Providence Park in Novi and Henry Ford West Bloomfield also changed emergency room protocols. We've closed uh, the emergency room for ambulance traffic. We're of course still taking any walk-in uh, patients that would come in. For Henry Ford Health System COO Bob Riney, there were also considerations regarding multiple outpatient locations. So we've had to close a number of our ambulatory sites today um, in the local marketplace. Patients of large Henry Ford outpatient facilities like the one on Farmington Road and the Columbus Medical Center received calls to reschedule appointments. As for hospital patients, Providence Park in Novi transferred four inpatient dialysis patients to Providence Hospital in Southfield. Meanwhile, at Henry Ford West Bloomfield, uh, we made a decision just to err on the ultimate side of safety and transfer our most critically ill patients. So we transferred about 15 patients to Henry Ford Hospital in Detroit. Now, the bottom line here is the hospitals are open and they're caring for walk-in emergency patients, but if you have any elective outpatient procedures or appointments and you did not receive a call to reschedule them, you should call to check the scheduling arrangements. Back to you. Now, Doc, I know you learned a lot about dealing with water concerns when you went to Haiti and reported from there. Is there anything people here can do at home in terms of filtering the water? Yeah, you know, that's a really important thing. Filtering any water and making it safe to drink is really easy. So rather than worrying about having gallons of water on hand or worrying about buying water, just having something like this filtration straw or this simple filtration bottle can be used to make water immediately drinkable. And these can be found online or at any outdoor stores. They're really handy for an emergency department or an emergency like this, and I highly recommend them. Quick and inexpensive solution there. Yeah. Thank you very much, Doc. Well, Kid Rock making some big news tonight for something <laughs> that he announced on Howard Stern's radio show. Of course, for months he was teasing a potential Senate run. Today he finally cleared the air. Steve Garagiola here, uh, pretty blunt about it, to put it lightly. I would say blunt. Yes, yes. That's, that's one word. I now have uh, no doubt what his favorite word is. Let's leave it at that. Kid Rock has campaign signs. He has an official campaign website. He even has endorsements, including former New York Governor George Pataki. But this morning in an interview with Howard Stern, seasoned liberally with profanity, Kid Rock admits it was all a joke to help promote his new album. I don't want to make these people right. feel bad. Okay. No, I'm not running for Senate. <laughs> Thank Maybe. God. Like, who f didn't figure that out? <laughs> I'm releasing a new album right. on November, whatever, 3rd or something like that. I'm, I'm going on tour, too, which, which is no one's going to print. <laughs> like, no, he's not running for f No, I'm... I, you don't... Me, but, this, this morning, but, the Pope endorsed you, and now you're turning them... Oh, wait, then I, might change, I might change my narrative. No, no, this is no, the but, smartest thing Howard. you've said. Someone could use like every fourth word, but I think you get the gist of it. Kid Rock went on to say that his staff was in on the joke, but even some of them began to wonder if he was serious because it started to gather momentum. But Kid Rock's unofficial run for the Senate is now officially over. And by the way, Kid Rock is Megyn Kelly's guest tomorrow morning at 9 right here on Local 4. Devin? Live show, too. They may have to be quicker with the beep than we were. A planned push for unity between the president and Congress wiped out by a bombshell announcement. A short time ago, GOP Senator Jeff Flake announced he will not be running for re-election. During that announcement, he blasted the president. Blaine Alexander following it from Washington. Blaine. Well, Devin, certainly an extraordinary day today in Washington. GOP Senator Jeff Flake announced he is not running for another term. Then he stood on the Senate floor and issued a withering critique of his party's own president. President Trump making a rare visit to Capitol Hill, hoping to rally his party around tax reform amid a series of distractions. A protester hurling Russian flags at the president as he walked with the Senate's top Republican. The two headed to a GOP unity lunch amid growing division. President Trump's weeks-long feud with GOP Senator Bob Corker now reaching a boiling point. Do you think the president's uh, debasing the nation? Uh, I don't think there's any question, but that's the case, just in the way that he conducts himself and 
and goes to such a low level. Corker stoking today's back and forth, saying the president should stay out of tax reform, let Congress hash it out. The president hitting back on Twitter, calling Corker a lightweight who couldn't get elected dog catcher, saying he dropped out when I refused to endorse him. Republican leaders trying to look beyond all of it. So all this stuff you see on a daily basis on Twitter this and Twitter that, Forget about it. Let's focus on helping people, improving people's lives, and doing the things that we said we would do that accomplishes that. That's what we're focused on. But Republican Senator Jeff Flake delivered a scorching critique of President Trump as he announced he will not run for another Senate term next year. We must stop pretending that the de get degradation of our politics and the conduct of some in our executive branch are normal. They are not normal. Calling on his colleagues to act against what he calls an alarming state of affairs. Silence. And Flake said he believes the president is a threat to the country and cannot stand by and be part of it anymore. In Washington, Blaine Alexander, Local 4. All right, Blaine. Decision 2017 tomorrow night right here on Local 4. Mayor Mike Duggan and the challenger, State Senator Coleman Young II, will square off in their only televised debate ahead of the November election. We'd like to know what questions you'd like us to ask the candidates. You can connect with us through our Facebook page, through Twitter, uh, through clickondetroit.com. Drop us a note in the mail. Uh, then watch the mayoral debate tomorrow night live here on Local 4 from downtown Detroit. The trial continued today for the Dearborn police officers accused of inappropriately touching a woman during a traffic stop. Justin Smith is charged with second degree criminal sexual conduct. Today, a fellow officer took the stand and testified that Smith did not follow proper procedure when he pulled that woman over. When an officer makes a traffic stop, uh, he or she is supposed to uh, notify dispatch that they are making a traffic stop, the location, the license plate of the vehicle, description of the vehicle. As part of your investigation, did you investigate to see whether or not uh, Officer Smith made a call in on the stop of the complaint of this particular case. I did. And what did you find? He did not call out the traffic stop. The trial was supposed to end today. However, more time is needed for another witness, so testimony resumes tomorrow. In good health, a new survey finds most Americans don't know some major risk factors for cancer. While the majority of adults realize tobacco use and sun exposure raise your risk of cancer, only 20% were aware that viruses like HPV can cause cancer. Just 30% knew that drinking too much alcohol can raise your risk. Less than a third of adults knew that obesity, uh, obesity rather, has been linked to 13 different types of cancer. This is critically important because in the next few years, obesity will replace tobacco as the leading modifiable risk factor for cancer. That's because right now more than 70% of U.S. adults, more than 70% are overweight or obese. The survey also found 8% of Americans incorrectly believe that caffeine causes cancer. In fact, studies find that caffeine may actually help lower your risk. The World Series kicks off tonight in Los Angeles, but the biggest opponent for both teams is something they cannot control. New tonight, what is expected for tonight that may just set a record? And they've been together for more than 100 years, but now Sears is in the midst of a bad breakup. New tonight, the one staple brand the company will no longer be selling. But first, my Opioid Nation special report. A mother who lost her son is sharing what she learned in hopes of helping others. That first pill for him was deadly. The one thing she wishes she would have done to expose her son's problem sooner. Next. On Jeopardy! New at 6. Call it a comeback. Detroit City Council making moves to try to improve the city. How they plan on making the business district more attractive and more pedestrian friendly. Everyone. Hey, a star athlete is helping these Detroit Public High School students learn about healthy eating. I'm Everett Kasumi. Coming up, we'll go inside of Mumford High School and share the special surprise Detroit Pistons star Andre Drummond had for these students. A mother speaking out, delivering a heartbreaking lesson to other parents. Tonight, she's talking candidly, opening up about what she wished she would have done when her son was a teenager. A question for you, is your teen using drugs? Would you be able to spot the warning signs? More and more parents are signing up their kids for random drug testing. It's something one mom is pushing for now after she lost her son to drugs. Harris Whittles always knew how to make people laugh. Harris was 
literally born a comedian. Mom Maureen remembers at age four, he insisted on being the birthday clown at his own party. At six, Harris was acting out skits. By 18, Harris won third place for Houston's funniest person at the last stop. Sarah Silverman heard him one night. She got in touch with him. He sent her some writing and he was hired to write on her show. Harris went on to write for the hit show on NBC Parks and Rec and later became executive producer. But when he wasn't writing or making people laugh, Harris was locked in a life or death struggle on the inside. That first pill for him was deadly. After a back injury, Harris started taking Oxycontin. Spending about $4,000 a month on Oxy. So it's real easy to move into heroin because it's cheaper and much easier to get on the street. After three stints in rehab and countless family interventions, Harris died from a drug overdose in 2015. His parents later discovered Harris started using drugs in junior high. We simply didn't know what was happening to him. The National Institute on Drug Abuse Research shows teens who use drugs are more likely to get hooked later in life. It's pretty common here to see a parent come in with a teenager and say they have some suspicions about their teen using drugs and ask what kind of tests we have. Doug Conquest with Any Lab Test Now tells us in the last two years he's seen a 30% increase in the number of parents drug testing their teens. The tests are simple, usually involving a hair or urine sample. Prices range from $20 to $70. Maureen is sharing her story to help save other parents her pain. If I knew Harris was having that problem, I would absolutely be drug testing him. Pharmacies sell over-the-counter drug tests that you can do at home, but they are limited in the types of drugs detected. For the most thorough tests, taking your child into a lab setting is the best option. And Local 4 is committed to special coverage on Opioid Nation. It is a crisis that affects one in three families. Dr. McGeorge will have the simple checklist you can follow at home to help protect you and your family from this epidemic. He'll have that special report tomorrow at 5. Well, the 113th World Series starts tonight in Los Angeles, but it is not the matchup that's making the headlines. Yes, everyone is talking about the heat. The temperature in L.A. will be a sweltering 99 degrees when the first pitch is thrown this afternoon. Luckily, the game is being played in the evening where the sun will be setting and bring down temps into the 80s. This will shatter the previous hottest World Series, which was back in 94, or I should say, which was 94 degrees in Phoenix during Game 1 of the 2001 World Series. So